evening or good day, depending on when you are joining me for this video and I am Kat, for those of you who haven't joined me before. So thank you for taking a little bit of time to come on and work with your hands and your feet. So we're going to need a little bit of equipment, but nothing that you can't or shouldn't be able to find handy. So. I have got a couple of tennis balls. You could try um, spiky massage balls as well, or um, anything else that's sort of like small um, with a ball. Uh, golf balls will do, but they get the harder the ball, the tougher it gets. The other option is, is if you haven't got a ball in the house, then you've got a foam roller, you could try that, or even a can of beans. Canopies, beans, whatever, will do. It's just so that we can take a bit of massaging through the feet and the hands. Okay, so grab what you need. Um, we're gonna be sitting, kneeling on the floor if we can. So maybe cushions, perhaps even a scarf or something like that might be useful just to help stretching with as well. Um, and if you're not happy or comfortable on the sitting on the floor, there's absolutely no reason why you can't do part of what we're gonna do today, seated on a chair at a table and things like that as well. So basically you're gonna do what you need to do to be able to get into your hands and your feet. So grab what you need and we will all come back onto the mat in a moment. Okay. All right, so what we're going to start off doing is some massage for the feet. So we're going to start off standing. So you're going to need either your can, and I've got, a I've got a little foam roller, or um, your ball. So if you've got two, they can go out of the way. Um, what we're going to do is just start to roll the foot. So if you have a can, it's just going to go forwards or backwards. Or whatever you've got, I mean it could be a bottle. You can roll along the edge of the foot on one side, edge of the foot on the other, if that's allowable with your ankle. You could spend a little bit of time just spreading the toes out, rolling over the toes, maybe coming around the heel. And it's the same thing on the foot with the tennis ball. You can roll around with on the edges, come up, let the toes come around. Take it under the heel. Sometimes if you're on a ball, you might find your ball kind of right on cue actually. Your ball flies off to the side. We'll just go and grab it again. So we're going to spend a bit of time working with one foot when you're ready, coming round to the other. And if you find there's a little spot on the foot that you go, oh, that's a little bit crunchy, a little bit sore, then you could just spend a moment rolling, pressing over that point with a little bit of self-massage for the feet and our feet for most of us well everyone but for most of us we spend a lot of time on our feet they get us up and down stairs they get us in and out of our car they walk from one room to the other and then we can be outside walking running playing sport walking the dog or even just spending a lot of time standing through the day. So once you've done one foot, make sure you have spent a little bit of time on the other. And it may be that one foot does actually feel like it needs a little bit more attention than the other. Again, make sure you're kind of going around the edges of the foot around the balls, around the toes, coming all the way up to the heel. And if you need to do it with a wall, just to help the balance, you know, by all means hold on to the table or the wall, just make sure it's something sturdy that's not gonna fall over with you. Okay, and then we're gonna come and do the same thing with the hands. So we're gonna to come to kneel or sit on the floor. And like I said, if this is um, an, um, not the most comfortable position to be in, then uh, do go and um, like sit on a, ta uh, a chair at a table or your kitchen work surface or whatever so that you can, um, or you could stand and do it, so that you can uh, get into the hands. 
and it helps if you can just take a little bit of weight. So if you kneel over your ball, and we're going to do exactly the same thing. Roll, you can even come around, it's a bit easy, you can come around onto the back of the hand. Use the same thing with your can or your roller, just rolling forwards, maybe even come up through the wrist. If you've got a watch on, you might want to take your watch off. And same idea as before, if you do find, I'm going to take my watch off actually, if you do find an area that you think, oh yeah, that's a little bit, that feels a little bit crunchy, a little bit sore, maybe just spend a little bit of time rolling over that area. So obviously if you are doing the feet and you feel able to, you can always, if you've got a roller or something, you can always spend a bit of time doing the calves as well. A ball or a can can be a bit easier to use with the wrist, but maybe not quite so easy if you're trying to do the, the legs. So once you've done one hand, make sure you spend a bit of time going through the other one. And again, our hands, whilst we maybe don't take a lot of weight, but we're always using them, whether it's typing, working with tools, we hold our phone a lot in that claw position, and that claw position is something we do get quite, you know, we spend a lot of time in, so we're just trying to stretch it out. <laughs> crunching around on the fucking hand, back of my hand, crunching over the ball. <laughs> Okay, so if you kind of feel like actually you need to spend more time massaging through the hands and the feet, by all means pause the video, spend a bit longer, otherwise we're just going to put the balls out of the way. So we're going to come to our feet first and we're going to take a little stretch through the feet. And if we can, we're going to start in a kneeling position. Now if you can't kneel, I will give you an alternative in a second, but all we're going to do is in that kneeling position, try and keep your feet in underneath your hips and just start to walk the hands back. So we start to lean back into the tops of the feet. Now that might be as far as you can go because obviously we're stretching through the front of the ankle, the foot and the toes. If you can come up a little bit higher with the knees, we can hold it there. That might send stretching further up into the legs as well. And we're just going to hold and breathe. Now, if you can sit on the floor or you can stay sitting on a chair, if you can grab hold of the foot. You can actually just take the hand and the leg, one hand on the foot, one hand on the shin, and just gently pull through so you get the stretch there through the front of the leg. A little bit less weight, obviously, in that position than if you are kneeling. So if you stick with it, it can be a tough position to be in. And then let it go. Push yourself up onto your hands and knees. Tuck the toes under. Sit yourself back. Again, we can... Um, rearrange the toes here if we need it. Sit back so the weight is coming into the feet and breathe there. So again if you're finding that kneeling position a little bit uncomfortable you could do it up against a wall. So you're going to put your toes up against the wall and then just push forwards with your knee. Now I've got the shelf in the way here, so I can't actually push all the way forwards. But it's almost as if you're coming into a lunge position. It's a great one to do that one over the stairs. So making sure you do both sides. Or you can sit and again, just pull through the feet. And the toes there. 
So it can be a tough position to be in. It doesn't look like much, but it can, you can start to feel it. And then release, let it go. If you need a moment just to catch up, because you've been working on individual feet, make sure you have done both stretches, both sides. And pause the video. Otherwise, we're just going to come into a tabletop position and pat out the tops of the feet. Tuck your toes under. And then as you exhale, lift up and come into downward facing dog. And we're just going to pedal the feet out like we normally would. Lifting up one foot and then the other. If down dog isn't your thing, then just take a nice little bend in the knees. You can hold on to something. And you're going to do exactly the same thing. Keeping the toes on the floor, just pedaling one heel up and then the other. Feel that awareness of the breath. And then see if you can, if you're in your down dog position, just let both heels drop to the floor. If you've taken the standing option, then just walk your feet away leaning into a wall until you start to feel maybe a little bend in the knees there. So you get a stretch through the back of your heels and the ankles. Good. From here, drop the knees to the floor. We're going to take some circles and some rolls with the ankles. So you can do the standing or sitting. Just drawing some circles with the right leg one way or right ankle. And then back the other way. And then some circles with the left ankle. And then back the other way. Okay, good. So our last one is um, so variation on our lion's um, pose. So for this one, we're just going to find any way comfortable to sit. So it could be on the chair, on the edge of the bed, or on the floor. And we're going to do one foot at a time. So we're going to take our fingers and we're going to place them in between our toes. So take your little finger, slot it in between the little toe and the next toe, then the next finger slots in, next finger, and then so on. Now if you're comfortable, you can kind of come then into this cross-legged position and sit there. Otherwise, just keep the foot in front of you. Drop the shoulders, breathe. This can be quite a tough one on the toes. Our toes spend a lot of time clothed in shoes, so. Good. let the toes, or oh, sorry, pull the fingers out, give the toes a little wriggle. And then if it feels okay to do so, just take one toe, give it a little wriggle and then a pull. A little wriggle and then a pull. Now if you have arthritis in your feet at all, maybe just a controlled movement, so very gentle little bit of movement through the toes, or maybe if this, the more boisterous wiggle and pull just feels a little bit strange again do a little bit more of a controlled movement and just work through each toe and then once you've got to the big toe we're going to swap sides so just notice how one foot feels compared to the other one and then swap the toes over and we're going to take again little finger in between the first little toe and then slowly make your way through remember you can stay here however that feels most comfortable, or come round into that cross-legged position. So you can do this 
with both feet in the full version, we will end up with both feet and you are sitting there like that and that squashes, one foot squashes the other as well. So we're just doing one foot at a time. So that can feel quite strange as well, having something in between your toes. Again, it's not something we'd normally do. So if you sit there, breathe. And then just gently release the fingers and then maybe take that little wiggle and pull, wiggle and pull if you want to take the slightly more controlled version where you just give a bit more gentle movement through the toes you can. And then just wiggle, stretch, move both feet. Okay, so that's our feet done. So we're now going to come on to the hands. So the first, you can do these first ones standing at a table or um, kitchen surface. But what we want to do is just be able to take some weight into the hands and push the weight forwards. So kneeling or standing, spread the fingers out and then you're just going to breathe out and push your shoulders forward. So you feel the weight come into the hands and we're working on stretching through the fronts of the fingers, the palms and up onto the wrists. So this is a great one to do if you do spend a lot of time with your hands, kind of in that claw position, whether it's typing, using tools, just holding the phone, driving. Everything we do kind of puts our hands in that rounded position. And this does actually start to take a little stretch up through the, the wrists as well. And obviously you can put as much or as little weight as you need or want to. And then sit back, take the weight out, maybe just shake the hands out. And then we're going to come the other way. So we're going to put the backs of the hands on the floor. Be careful how much weight you put through the hands here. And then try and pull the shoulders back. So we don't want just the fingers or like the fists on the floor or your table, whatever you're using. We want the backs of the hands on the mat. So be careful here. If you're dumping your weight in here, that can feel quite awkward in there. So particularly if you're kneeling, we need to take a little bit of core strength here. Getting that stretch through the back of the wrists. Keep working with the breath. Good, slowly roll, peel it up and out, and then circle, gently circle the wrists around. And circle back the other way. We're going to slowly work through each finger then now again so sitting comfortably standing kneeling wherever you want to go so what we're going to do is just take the tip of the little finger and pull it down and then work through the next one you might find you get different sensations through the palm and through the wrist here and then middle finger Release, come around to the next one. And then through the thumb. Just watch you're not shrugging your shoulders up here. We don't have to be sort of like really dramatically pulling them down, but you want to be hunching. Let go of the thumb, and then we're going to do the same thing. 
working through the, uh, with their little sort of like little wiggle, take the lower part of the finger and then the middle part and then the top part, maybe take that little pull. So wiggle, come up a little over the knuckle, over the top joint and then pull. So remember if, this, if there's a bit of arthritis in the hands or you know you've got to be a little bit more careful with them, maybe take a little bit more of a gentle movement, just kind of getting the joints to ease and move. Work your way through each finger, come up to the thumb, and then shake that hand out. And then we're going to try the other side. So starting again with a little finger, just gently pull it down. And then come across to the next one. Working your way across the hand, stretching through the fingers. Maybe the left hand feels slightly different to the right, vice versa. Just keep making sure everything's mindful, keeping that awareness of the breath. And then the thumb. And then if you want, you can take the wiggle and the, the little wiggle, 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 below the knuckle, above the knuckle. Oh, not the, the, no, not, not the, the next joint on from the knuckle. Just give it the pull. Ooh, nice little click on that one. I wonder if you um, need to be more careful with the joints in the hand. You can take some more control movement, because even a little bit of control movement is still good to take around the joint. So work your way through all the fingers and the thumb, and then shake the hand out. So you can let it go floppy, so quick shake. And maybe shake out both. And then let the arms go and take some nice rolls around with the shoulders. And then just melt the shoulders down the ribs. And there we go. That is our TLC for our hands and our feet. So you don't have to do all of that together. You can always do the feet and then the hands at another time. So you can always chop and change through this video. And even if you just liked the rolling and the massaging with the hands and feet, maybe have a little go at that. You can stretch the hands out without needing to roll them, same with the feet. So you can take little bits of that and just slot it in whenever you need it. Okay, good. So if you did like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, let me know. And be sure to hit the subscribe button now so you know when our next video comes up and you can join me again on another day. All right, thank you now. Bye.